it's hot. I'm going in for a second. So. <laughs> All right, we are live. We are live. <laughs> with Brett and Jonathan. So anyway, we're, we're trying to get other people in the room who are having technical difficulties, but uh, thank the two of you for joining me. Absolutely, yeah, thanks for having us. So you're, you're obviously both in Colorado. Um, let me find where you guys are. I have like 50 windows open, there I am. Um, so, T talk about kind of give me like how do you guys know each other is, is the like the colorado breeding community uh a small one um it is. And, and by the way just quickly introduce yourselves uh i'm brett heart and soil project uh owner breeder jonathan covert covert genetics owner and breeder okay and then so how do you guys know each other um it didn't really start off it's, with uh, Ken Brule. Yeah, so I, I used to work for um, Greenpoint Seeds. I used to do a lot of uh, breeding for them. And at, at the time, you know, Covert and I were kind of in touch on Facebook and stuff like that from afar. But um, he saw that I was working there, was looking for the, um, the Kim, uh, the Copper Kim mm -hmm. cut, uh, cut to make a, um, a cross with his, his, uh, Lemon Brulee um, at the time, right? Yes, that's what that's, made that's that. what made the the Kim Brulee. Um, so that's how you know that's how we connected. I got him that cut, and um, and, and it went from there. You know, we just kind of helped each other out with cuts here and there, and you know, we got a, a lot of same interests, with dogs and kids and family and all that stuff. So we just kind of kept kept rolling. It's been been good personal and business relationship for sure. Absolutely. So, all right. So, so you guys do have a business relationship with each other. Cause I think what I want to start with is kind of like, you know, you both have kids. We do. Yes. And, and, and cool. breeding is a source of income, if not the only source of income for both of you, it's, it's a source of income. So like you're building a business and your businesses, I'm a breeder and that's what I, you know, am in the world and known as, and that's, and what, that's what I sell. And and so can you talk about kind of like the, uh, you know, scrap, scrappy, scratching it out, fighting and clawing to, to become a, a breeder who people know and trust and kind of the journey to get there? Uh, I mean, it's definitely I, I an think, uphill battle, that's for sure. I think it's just doing what you say you're going to do over and over and over again and don't screw people over. Yeah. And and follow your heart in terms of your breeding practices. And, and that, I think that's all anybody can ask is, you know, try to make the best, you know, quality seeds, best quality experience for that customer and, you know, and do it over and over and over again. It's important to listen to the, the community as far as who's buying what from you, as well as other people, you can, you can really, um, it, it's hit or miss as far as you, the breedings. If, if, it's not popular at the moment, chances are it's not going to move as quick. So, I mean, you can play off of other people's moves, which is kind of what me and Brett have been doing as far as the sharing of the cuts, um, uh, referring people to each other, this and that. Uh, it, it's, I mean. It's collaboration. It's, it's, synerg it's synergy. It's one plus one equals three. It's like the only way, you know, I think to do business is, you know, helping others do business. And um, I think you get, you get a lot of respect that way in in the industry so if you don't have something maybe somebody else wants and they're asking you you immediately refer that other person and then you get up a sale and that's happened multiple times on for both of us mm -hmm. just in the same week you know so Absolutely. um i think that's uh, that's key is just you know collaborating and just uh working and being and being open with your with your uh, customers and do, do you both have similar taste and uh, kind of the terpene profiles that appeal to each of you? Or are you totally different? Um, just depends. Are you talking about what we're smoking or what we're growing? Well, ooh, yeah. So, yeah. so basically what the market wants and what you like, those may not be the same thing, right? Absolutely. absolutely. I, I'm all gas, no brakes. Um, I won't speak it, for Brett. 
in, in, in terms of what you like to smoke or what you're smoke. you're I mean, making what, for the market smokes nothing but but things that that hurt your nostrils you know, <laughs> when they come in and out Absolutely. you know and i don't mind those things but like i really do enjoy fruity strains uh tropical strains sativa blends uh everything in between everything in between i mean i like a little bit of everything as long as it's clean and grown grown properly but uh but yeah, I think, you know, his breeding style is a little, a little different. He's working those OGs and I'm branching out and hitting as many, you know, different continents as I possibly can, you know, and trying to uh, bring in as many of those um, genetics maybe that could be lost to us here soon if we don't do some uh, preservation and, you know, crossbreeding and outbreeding, you know, yep. so. That's kind of okay. So, so, so you're a preservationist of the heirloom. Uh, uh... I, I don't know if I'd call myself a preservationist. I, I would love to think myself that way, but like, let's be honest, like the things I get my hands on may or may not be in their original form, you know, and I do try to do pay homage to those strains, you know, in like one or two crosses, especially at least in the beginning of the line, you know, doing F2s or BXs or, you know, whatever, whatever that may be. But then I also branch out and hit them with coverts you know, lemon brulee and uh, things like that and um, try to expand them as well. So I, I would like my, you know, I like to preserve, you know, but I also like to expand on. So I like to give people those options. That's when I do full lines. I like to try to do a male to a female of a certain region and then hit that male to multiple clone onlys. A lot of them, you know, sourced through this guy and other good breeders in Colorado. So that's kind of the fun of it for me is uh, doing a little bit of both, you know. There's honestly a lot more untapped potential in his breedings than the conventional simply because he's sourcing genetics that are regional to certain areas versus obviously me and dozens of other breeders using what's around them um, as far as clone onlys or sourcing seeds from local or just other state breeders. Um, the the potential in those land race strains is just it's ridiculous and then you cross into something you know hypothetically og kush and you've got you've got the next <laughs> cup winner that everybody's like what the hell is this and then oh yeah it's so, uh, some uh, uzbekistani to you know whatever it was hot at the moment and it was like what is it, this is it, a land race resilience and, and vigor yeah you absolutely. know combined with the high thc and high resin production of these more modern strains you know you put those two together and you find the right pheno you can have something special you know so that's the that's the fun so i like to move from region to region and cross in some of his stuff when i can and some other other fun genetics you know mac and you know all those other fun you know Clone There's that, so many good breeders out there to work with. It's, I mean, <laughs> well, so who, whose stuff are you, but was, I got a bunch of questions. So first of all, um, in Colorado, can, can you guys grow outdoors? Can you like test stuff indoor and outdoor or what, what's kind of each of your setup? So I do all my stuff indoor. Um, everything I do is indoor. You know, I, I've grown stuff outdoor before, you know, but with, you know, both the laws and the kids and under lock and key and all that good stuff, I just like to keep it under lock and key inside, you know, um, keep it out of, out of anybody's hands. <laughs> so, but yeah, as far as testing goes, yeah, there's plenty of people here that we can have tests our stuff outdoors, indoors, just personally with the kids and everything, it's got to be kept locked. Yeah, there's plenty of good greenhouses and outdoor growers and stuff like that in Colorado and uh, that are growing our stuff and yeah, you know, but us us personally at this time all indoor. Got it. But but you can get it out to them to see how it expresses them. So it, you oh know. yeah, so we got stuff out in, in, in out, outside right now this season. I do anyway. I can't speak for him, but I'm sure we do. We both do, and especially in California, we have a lot of growers growing outside uh, right. there as well. We even actually have one grower that's actually in Peru growing some of our Peruvian land race. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, so do, do you, so can you both kind of talk about the, the beginning for each of you kind of, you know, I assume you were both growing and then it was kind of like, I want to start breeding. And then kind of when you get to the point where you feel like you have something that's not just like, 
Paul and Chucky and it's more like I have something special. It's stable. It's something I would actually put in the market and take money from people to, you know. I think, well, I think it starts with like knowledge of the plant, right? Like how the plant expresses itself like in any other way, growing from seed, growing from clone. Uh, we both spent a lot of time in the industry. Uh, I worked for Kind Love um, starting off for a couple of years. I went to a, a bunch of other places. I was director of cultivation at a few places, uh, things like that, you know, give you knowledge just of the plant itself. And I was uh, a breeder for somebody else uh, for a little while, breeding from the seeds. Um, and that gave me a lot of knowledge. That was my first breeding experience and just seeing how, how they did things and, um, you know, what the process was and how to get more seed and um, all, and all that stuff, um, and quality seeds. Um, I think that plays played a role in, in my experience anyway, but just experience, whether that's in your basement or, or whatever, but it's like just growing multiple varieties of the plant over and over and over again, growing from clone, growing from seed, and then you're like, okay, I like these expressions. So whenever you find, you know, expressions in those males or females and you move forward, you know, I think you read a lot for your own personal, you know, tastes and breed some awesome stuff. So that's, that's what it was for me is just, you know, knowledge of the plant and then, and then kind of going from there and then I took a trip, a trip to Peru and found some awesome genetics and brought them back and kind of that's where it all started it was just good timing and uh I found an awesome male and kind of that's where the, the project started and we also do all kinds of other products and that's when we started our company um around that same time and it just kind of all connected for me to go into breeding but but that but then talk about like your first seed pack sale and kind of when you knew that the seeds were well, ready for really prime time. And... Uh, that's another reason why we're like in we're I, we're such good friends is whenever I first released my genetics, like I did a lot of testing first. You know, I sent out free packs and uh, stuff like that, and just had people grow and make sure they weren't just like bunk seeds, you know, because my first time around, you're like, you want to make sure, obviously, and not every time you breed, you want to do a little testing, but I was really anxious to get those results back. Once we find out they were, you know, doing pretty well, I released them and people were buying, started to buy the full line. And I found that the reason that they did that is because this guy referred them to me and said, you got to check out this guy's genetics. He just released this full line. I had 24 strains in the line. People were buying one of everything. Wow. So that really did me a big favor at the time when I was down on my luck kind of financially. And, you know, things were just going not so, I mean, you know. That's what it's all so, about. So, yeah, so things weren't going so well. And this guy came in and, like, referred me to some awesome owners and breeders and kind of got my name out there uh, a little bit more. And so he, he was like your hype man. He was my hype man. <laughs> on the low like he didn't really do it like on the rooftop he just did it on the dms when people were asking for some cool stuff and um it worked out you know some of, you know so i was able to sell a lot of seeds in a short amount of time um so it was pretty awesome like it was like whoa this was you know this was really cool um i was some, something i was not expecting and he, like i said this guy had a lot to do with it well so jonathan what stood out about what brett was breeding that made you be like everybody should pay attention to this guy um passion and selection um brett really cares about what he's doing whether it's breeding or taking care of his son or family or you know anything of the sort uh, you can just tell when someone cares and that's him i mean every every selection that he's made he's put a lot of thought into the combinations um he's not just uh oh i've got a land race and i'm hitting everything of the sort it's very selective breeding and then selective um testing he's not just um he, you, you can't just get free stuff from him like you, you've got to you got to pay for the test pack like he, it it matters where it's going because he doesn't want just people passing stuff off. Yeah, I, got, I, got never burned running on, I got burned on the first round of doing that a bunch of seats for for free and no one got back to me. So I kind of learned, I'm like, well, if you give something away for free, they don't value it. So I charge $10 a pack Absolutely. for the testers and, uh, and, and something, yeah, but, the return. So. No, you're good. And the, the feedback was just 
so much better than obviously the free stuff because you get something, you toss it in the back of your stash and it's just like, oh yeah, I got that for free. Whereas if you pay, even if it's just a little bit, you remember it. It's like, oh, I need to run this. I paid for it. <laughs> um, and then obviously the selection of the the land races. I mean, I don't I don't know very many people that are using any any of those land races to to work and and hybridize with what we've already got on the market today. Um, a lot of people are doing cross breeding as far as the land race to land race, which is super neat in itself. But um, I, I like to see all those expressions that we've sort of crafted, um, say with uh, my Kimberlé, you know, the structure and everything like that. And then he took the Peruvian, which was completely different in every way, shape, and form, and just created something phenomenal. And everything off of that line and every line that he's made since then has just been, it's been amazing. I have, I'm pretty sure I have every single pack that he's made. Oh, he, he got every pack. I made sure. <laughs> he gets, it's he not gets, me he just gets, talking. Yeah, he gets I, I, I support him that way too. I have all this stuff. Um, I run it and we'll be breeding with it uh, soon enough. Sorry, I'm uh, asking people on YouTube any specific questions. Uh, got people from Maine, from South Africa. Uh, Congo's, Congo's coming up. I just Ontario. I actually used um, uh, the, the Durban that I used was from Coffee Bay, South Africa. Okay. So, so can, can you talk like the, the Peruvian, can, can you kind of describe it as, as like a cultivar in terms of how it grows and. So it's a uh, very vigorous, very strong branching. Um, it, what struck me about it was it wasn't like a lot of sativas. It kind of grew a little bit more squat. Um, it had, still had that vigor, but it had more like lateral branching and just bigger bigger leaves, you know, bigger leaves, and just um, whenever I threw them both into flower, the male flowered super early and super vigorously, and they kind of both finished a lot earlier than most sativas do, but they still had that, like, sativa kick, um, but, you know, Peru is a very diverse region, you know, it's got everything from jungles to snow-capped peaks, and, you know, it just has one of those, you know, interesting, you um, interesting lineages for me because it just could it could contain everything from kind of like a, a cushy type of, of strain to like a super sativa that takes 120 days, you know, and then this one kind of the male and the female kind of um, hit on the bit, a little bit lower side, you know, and they just had like an interesting um, structure. And when I flowered them out, they had like this sweet peppery kind of uh, smell. And one of them had like a mango, uh, like almost melon type of, I call it cantaloupe, like Can, a, a cantaloupe, uh, cantaloupe honeydew. Yeah, so that was the sativa melon, you know, that I that I that I used in the Mozambique line. But but anyways, it was just very unique strain. So that's that's why, I, and I just love sativas too. But I didn't want a sativa that was going to take forever and it was, wasn't going to produce anything. So I want kind of wanted this a little bit different, and um, I found that, and you know, that's kind of where the the brand, you know, the breeding brand started, and you know, so I found those seeds when I was actually hiking. Uh, the Inca Trail, I you know got some some stuff from a, a couple areas, and one bag was just really interesting. Uh, a little bit tighter nut, nut structure, sweeter, um, not as like racy, and it had seeds in it. And those came back with me in a sock, and <laughs> here we are, you know. Right. Um... Sorry, I'm like, so can, can you like, from your perspective, can, can you define what you would call land race? Because I mean, my opinion of right. land race is right. kind of like, it's almost, you, it can't exist outside it of this almost anymore, right? It's so like, I, I would it's, call it more heirloom, like, but so, so what, heirloom, when you so say I'm, land race, what do you mean? Well, I, you know, when I say land race, I say something that's out there growing wild that man hasn't touched for a long time. You know, that's land race to me. Um, so the things that I grow, I generally call them heirloom, heirloom varieties. You know, it's as close to uh, land race as we can get, and we're gonna tr try to you know preserve what 
those farmers, you know, because those farmers are the ones that preserved it. They've touched it. You know, they're the ones, you know, in that region, even, even if they've done it over years and years and years through natural selection, not even selective, you know, breeding, um, it's, it's still touched by man. So I would consider those heirloom seeds. And it's, it's tough to call anything land race these days. Right. And then uh, people are asking if uh, kind of genetics you have that would maybe be better for flowering and others that might be better for uh, hash. Any, anything okay. you have that's kind of a hash, uh, a good yielder in, in whatever terms you define good yielding, whether well, it's uh, quantity high, or flavor. High oil, high oil, oil can, can, content, you know, the, out of the current strains that I have, yeah, the Peruvian line, they're kind of selling off pretty pretty quickly um but we do still have the lima lemons which is his lemon brulee uh, which is super gassy and super oily you know it just coats coats your mouth and coats everything the, the lemons naturally have a high oil essential oil content um they're better for uh hydrocarbon versus um uh water hash um so you can expect um really nice numbers off of that. I know the lemon brulee and most of the brulee line itself um, easily six, seven, eight percent returns. Yeah, so, yeah, so lima lemons for sure. And then we have one called Fantastico, which is the uh, wedding cake uh, across the Peruvian. And that one's super, um, super great for hash as well. Just off the top of my head. I mean, um, you know, we also have some CBD strains that are super resinous as well. The uh, Ayahuasca Queen, is one of the shortest flowering uh, CBD strains I've ever encountered. It's like 50 days. Um, so we hit it with the, the, you know, the sativa, which will bring it up a little bit. Um, but the, it's, you know, it's, it was a great, it, it's a great hash producer as well. So. Um, and and, and kind of what, what's the backstory on that word, word kind of. The ayahuasca. Right? When I hear that, I think kind of central South America. Yeah. So yeah. So the uh, ayahuasca queen, um, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, the, the Lucy, which is um, Luca Brasi and LA Confidential, um, that it, it, um, it, it's super squat. I mean, I just, I, it was one of the first strains I grew when I got out, out here in Colorado, and I had no clue what it was. And I ended up growing a kind of, a kind of and I was able to get that strain into the testing, and I was able to get it actually tested, and they found out that it was like, you know, like a 17% CBD and a 7% THC, which is, you know, pretty nice. And it finished in like 50, 55 days. So they brought that into their, into their uh, lineup over there at Kind Love. And that's kind of when I found out that it was like, okay, wow, this is something special. So I kept that around and I used that in you know, my first breeding project, which is kind of special. So the Ayahuasca Queen is just a name. It's just a <laughs> sweet, it's just a cool name. Because it has a, real, a lot of medical properties. Gets your attention. You know, and it, yeah, I mean, and it's from the region. It's from the region. It's from the Peru Peruvian, you know, uh, you know, area is well known for ayahuasca. And while I was there, I did not get to partake, but one day, yeah. one day, next time. Are, are there certain uh, kind of less prominent terpenes or kind of some of the minor cannabinoids that each of you are kind of exploring or trying to tease out? Yeah, that, in, in some of your breeding, like I think, I think it, like which cannabinoids are you really trying to express? I think you know overall, I'm trying to express as much THC as possible, but get that full spectrum effect. You know, get the terpenes, get the THCV, you know, get some CBD in there. THCV would be I think, phenomenal. I think THCV is like the hunt in the in the. That's uh, why I in use the, air, the in the heirlooms. I think that's the hunt right. in the heirlooms is the THCV. Um, you know, obviously you're trying to hit 30% THC all day, uh, but there's only so much room. For well, like but, but is that for the market or for yourself? Well, I'm, both? I'm, I'm, I'm half, I'm half joking. You know, it's just like, no, for, for, I'm, I'm serious. The market's all about numbers. Fuck. Right now. No, no, I, yeah. A hundred percent. And I just, my stuff, you know, may or may, may not ever hit like that. It would be like, we've had some tests, 21, 24, 25, um, maybe we'll get, get up there but we're finding like there's more in between you know there's like cbg cbn cbc right. you know t uh, CB, you know cbd obviously you know there's there's only so much room on the, on the color wheel for a plant to have mm -hmm. if it's being taken up by 32 percent mm -hmm. thc there's not a lot of room for those those other cannabinoids to kind of get in there so 
that's kind of what I'm trying to explore, but also tie in that high knock you on your ass punch that comes from a 28, 30%er, you know? We really rely on other facilities for those test results though. Right. Like we, we personally can't test for that here in Colorado. I don't know anywhere that private breeders can. Um, With that being said, um, our data collection is limited to what has been passed on to us. So at the moment, I'm only receiving THCs, CBDs, um, and terpene tests. Outside of that, I don't, I'm not sure if anybody is testing for any other um, cannabinoids. You just have to pay extra for those. And, right. And like those are you know, those are our decisions. It's kind of what he's absolutely, getting at. So absolutely. They only want what the market needs, you know. So, so unfortunately, one day hopefully we'll be able to. Yeah, test them. I mean, I think I think what I'm hearing is that testing labs aren't really set up to test for stuff besides THC and kind of the main dominant terpenes and cannabinoids. So if you have something more obscure that's starting to chart uh, or or register, like wait, they're not going to even notice it because they they're, they're, they're not set up to test. Somebody who's growing a lot of our stuff to be in a large facility. So we got I got some people out in Oklahoma that are starting to do that, um, but it takes time. You know, those things take time to get into good places, you know, that want to buy your whole lineup and grow it all out and give you all the test results and let you know, okay, these are the ones to hit, you know, so. But I agree with you. It'd be nice to know. Uh, so I just posted it in our uh, little, if you can see the chat window. Do you guys see what I just posted there? I did not. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Nothing yet. Oh, here, here. Let's see. There's a chat right there. Oh, there we go. How long does it take to focus and maximize on a specific gene? I have sour D bag seed, which is wild. Been running here for over a year, but now I want to keep her going. Find a male and then BX to mom. So I guess, (laughs) yeah, you can always, you can always swim it. You know, I'm. If, if, like if you, if you, you have know. the least amount of variance in my experience, in my opinion, with FIMP. So if you if you want to um, almost a carbon of the of the pheno that you have, try and FIMP that. So clone it, spray one of them, get it to produce the pollen onto the other of the same, and chances are you're going to get a lot of those moms in the seed form. Um, but if you, if you find a male BX and all that stuff, um, males enter a lot of, uh, phenol variations that that female didn't have herself. Um, so you can really stick to what you like if you can get it to film. Yeah. I mean, if you got them sprayed, you want to go through the fem process, obviously that's, that's the best way to get like, and, the closest and- thing, but. You that's get, coming from an all regular breeder. Yes, yeah, so I, I don't. I don't touch them spray myself, but um, he is correct on, on those. You know, it's just genetics. But um, yeah, otherwise you could just try to find the one that looked most like the mom. You know, pop a bunch of seeds, find the one that looks most like the mom and most like the dad. And that's why it takes so long for us regular breeders. Right. Yeah. Because then you got to go through the, and then you got to go through those seeds really and find the one that looks most like the mom, most like the dad. You know, and smokes, you know, it's, it's tough to find. If that's what you're going for. If that's for. what you're going for is trying to find that. Exactly. So um, to answer the question, uh, the FEM spray is, is the most. It's the shortest route. It's, yeah, it's the short, shortest route to the line, but there's a lot what, of ways to get there. What kind of the art and science of breeding, can each of you talk about some lessons someone imparted on you that kind of once you got that, it just like, you felt like it, it upped your game a lot in terms of just understanding breeding. Um, you know, I think it's hard to say, but you know, um, the guy, the guy I used to grow for, uh, good from Greenpoint, he, he told me that, you know, if a male holds, um, in veg and holds in flower, it's usually stable, you know, it, it, it'll hold, it, most, most plants will show under 18.6, 18.6 light, you know, uh, it'll show male or female, but sometimes you just can't tell. That plant is generally stable because it didn't fluctuate under the 18.6 light, it needs that 12.12 flip. So, you know, basically that, um, whether it be male or female, a, um, 
a plant that shows sex that's not under 12, 12 light or close to it um, could be unstable and could, could fluctuate based on, you know, the stresses it's put under and, you know, maybe turn hermaphrodite on you or something like that. So when you, when you're trying to find a good male and you speak a good female to breed with, that's, that was something that, that stuck out to me early on. If that makes sense. And you, Jonathan? Oh. Just kind of, kind of as, you know, it, it's like you start as novice breeders and then kind of working your way up to becoming kind of more expert, kind of what, um, what, what were some of the big kind of epiphany lessons you learned along the way? Don't overvalue other people's opinions on the work that you're doing. Mm. So follow your gut. The gut's everything. Yeah. It's, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do take what, chances. Yeah. You gotta do what you want to do. And yeah. you, you're gonna fuck up along the way. That's why you, you gotta, you gotta have a game plan going in. And if you just kind of go in with the thought of, hey, this is a quick way to make money, it, you're gonna, for one, you're gonna get called out right away because everybody sees that shit. So, um, you got to have a game plan um, and don't stray from that on based on other people's opinions of the work that you're doing. Um, there's, there's gold in there somewhere and <laughs> don't be afraid to, to work to find it. Um, so c can we touch on feminized seeds? Cause you, you said neither of you do that, right? Um, I mean, not yet. I am working on it. To be oh, honest. you are. Okay. Yeah. And, and and so what's kind of the, but Brett, you don't, right? I, I do some advising on it for other companies, but I just particularly, I mean, I'm after like that new, I'm not interested in like keeping anything current around. It's like life is fleeting. Strains always, strains are fleeting. The hype strains are always changing. It's like, you gotta stay ahead of the curve if you want to like, you know. So, so for me, uh, feminizing is like, just like holding your ground kind of thing. It's like setting your post in the, when you're rock climbing, you know, otherwise there's those free climbers and just kind of go for it. And then sometimes they fall, but they're the great ones. I, I'm just doing it to, to say I tried it. Um, I know a lot of feminized femme breeders, um, one in particular, Rick Campanella of uh, Brothers Grimm. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> He's probably one of the foremost in feminized breeding out there, at least in my opinion. Um, and if you guys don't know about him, you should definitely check him out on Instagram. <clears throat> uh, Brothers Grim Seed Co. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna text him and see if he can jump on. So hold oh, on. Yeah. But uh, ah, get, get, on. Get, go, go through your thought. Uh, finish your thought on that. He's just uh, he's someone that I I look up to. Um, for, for one, just just because he's a great guy, but um, as far as the feminized breeding goes, um, and he, I, why not? If if it doesn't work for me, I go back to what I'm used to. If it does, then I keep doing what I was doing prior, but I've got something new that worked for me, and I can uh, put it out on the market for those that look for film. And, and people want film. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely. Like when your customers come to you and say, please, please, please make fems, mm -hmm. it's tough to not give the customer what they want. Absolutely. I haven't had people <laughs> knock down my door to ask for fems yet. Right. So it's easy for me to say, mm -hmm. you know, but like, you know, a lot of breeders, they, their, their customers want the same strain. They want to be able to go back five years later and be like, hey, I bought this strain from you. Now you have a feminized version. So mm -hmm. they go out and find their best female you know, and they come with it. So, which is what the, is what the Sometimes you got to dictate to what the, uh, the market wants, but. Can, can you yeah. talk about picking males, selecting males? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, kind of like that was a small tell. The first thing I learned, like I said, was the, you know, making sure it's, a, or trying to make sure it's a stable male. Uh, that's number one, but also just like, same thing you would look for in a female. It's like vigorous growth, strong branching, whatever you're kind of looking for in that, in that you know strain that you're kind of looking for you know sometimes people will say it's a stem rub you know will give I'm you some, 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 some indication some in indication you know you can 
you know that it, when, when a when a male is funky you can tell and if it doesn't have any fun it's a lot of time i mean he's done the breeding to, to figure you know a lot of these things out you know um it, it's a lot of times it's your gut feeling about a male if you i think it's about selection first of all and number one is doing more than just finding one male you gotta look at a bunch of males you know at it's, least at least a a couple, you know, depending on your size. It's easier for me. He's working with land races. Yeah. Like he has no idea what, say, a good male is going to pass on or a, a, a shoddy looking male is going to pass on. He's like, he's strictly going off of um, physical characteristics from, from the first go around. I have the advantage of, I've put in either half of the work or both sides of the work on the male that I'm selecting, I already know what traits he has to pass on. So I know what to look for at least 50% of the time in, in the pro gene um, as far as for another male. Um, so it, it's easier for me. He, <laughs> I don't know how he's doing it, but I, I'm, just, I'm hunting like, you know, it's like digging, it's like digging for gold or digging for crystals <laughs> or something. You go, you go with the lines and you try to find the, the spot to dig and sometimes you get in there and you hit a pocket and it's full of crystals and sometimes you get in there and it's just nothing and you hit a you hit a brick wall a granite wall or something that's why he's so, got so much stuff going on so you just got to keep pumping it out <laughs> you just got to keep pumping it out really and uh try to make your best selections and find the best females and go through the process properly and make the best seeds possible and uh, i grow everything in no-till living soil people that don't do that i don't think i necessarily have better seeds than them but it definitely cost me a lot less money uh, <laughs> and uh, I have a lot less environmental uh, impact. Uh, I mean, it's just something I've been doing for the last 10 years, growing in the same soil, building it up. And I like hearing that. So, so talk to, uh, and are you both kind of uh, doing the living soil? Are you both soil uh, based? I flip flop. So when I'm, when I, I first met him, he was doing full notes of living soil. That's when I, when I do my seeds, it's organic. When I'm doing my flour, like for smokable, it's salts. And for particular reasons, I get a lot more explosive growth. Um, more flour, more weight. Right. With my salts. Yeah. Um, and then with my organics, obviously, it's, it's a marinated process. Um, my seeds are just so much, they're, they're plumper, it's like, they look like they're going to explode. I'm sure you can uh, attest to that. They're super vibrant. What's that? Organic seeds. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, you know, I do teas and mm -hmm. pretty much water only because I don't like making a mess of nasty teas. <laughs> and because my soil is super old and I've had worms in there that have been in there for the last five years. So. <laughs> That, yeah. That's interesting though. So, so you have two distinct setups, one for flowering, which is basically hydro. And then the other, which is for breeding. No, no, no. I'm, I'm uh, as far as raw salts, I, I mix up um, raw salts and then I feed my, uh, my plants that are in cocoa corn. Um, and then when I do my, my seeds, um, obviously I have my amended soils and I use organic inputs and things like that. But uh, no hydro for me. Okay. But, but you, you feel like the living soil helps create the best seeds and you feel like the cocoa with the salts helps produce the best bud? Um, not necessarily the best. That's personal preference. I feel for anyone as far as the buds itself. Um, I feel it's a more natural process for this, for the seed making. I mean, if, if um, they're not being, um, uh, I don't know, force fed with the salts, they have time to, they focus take, on their seeds. They take what they, they take what they need. I think from the living soil when they need it. You know that's kind of how I yeah, how yeah. I describe it. You know it's like you've got everything in the same place in PK the micronutrients, but they kind of reach out when they need it. And with the salt, you're kind of telling them, okay, now it's time to eat breakfast. Now it's time to eat lunch. Now it's time to eat dinner. Now it's time for dessert. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's time <laughs> for bed. Yep. You know, but with, and they're you know, already doing so with living much. Living soil sometimes it takes longer. I mean, sometimes it takes two weeks longer, honestly, in living soil to finish flower out even. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the seeds I let go for a long time. I let die on the plant to make sure <laughs> they're done. Um, 
go through the natural hardening process and everything. But um, yeah, sometimes it takes a little bit longer um, to do with the no-till living soil. And sometimes with flour, you don't get as much yield. You know, the terpenes are insane. Yeah, I think the flour is amazing, but you definitely don't get as much yield that way. And luckily, I'm growing for seed 99.9% mm -hmm. .9 of the time. And it produces great for seed, nice, hard, absolutely hard, you know, high quantity of seed. So, you know, can, can, can you talk about, um, and this would probably either, you know, I guess people in Colorado who are growing your seeds or just other people around the country who you've heard back from, but like same genetics grown in the Pacific Northwest, indoors, outdoors, uh, SoCal, like just kind of what people have anecdotally told you about, you know, how this plant expresses itself different, same genetics expressing itself differently in kind of different environments and the feedback you've gotten. So like pick, pick, pick a cultivar that you're known for and then kind of what people have told you. Um, the lemon brulee, um, indoor, it, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty much synonymous, synonymous across the board as far as test results, growth rates, stuff like that, yields. Um, uh, I've seen a variance within like two to 4% um, in gardens in different states. Um, but outdoors, uh, it definitely likes, um, West coast better than East coast. It's, it's not, um, I don't know, like, like the humidity on the East coast is different than the West coast, I guess. I thought humidity was the same. I'm not from any coast. I'm from Nebraska and then I moved into Colorado. So I don't necessarily understand how all that works. I just have to go off feedback and I mean, East Coast, it, it, um, it doesn't prefer that and it's, it bud rots. I don't know if that's because of size or what, but uh, yeah, people on the East Coast definitely let me know that. Yeah, and I think, I think for me, I mean, to be quite honest, most people who grow it inside, um, mm -hmm. in my experience, mm -hmm. um, there's some people growing, growing outdoor in Cali and stuff like that. Um, I had somebody growing it um, and I'm outside, it's just going to be a little bit more leafy, you know, you know, less, oh, for sure, for less, sure. not that we have less, you know, control to take a little bit longer, especially with like, uh, the heirloom genetics in my stuff, you know, sometimes it just depending on which coast you're on, you know, um, in California, they said, you know, it was just taking a little bit longer to, uh, to finish on like the land and the full land race stuff. It usually finishes in like 13 weeks. It was taking like 15, 16 weeks, you know, it just like kept going outside but when you're inside you know people have a lot more control and just the phenotype variation so his is more like dialed in i feel like you know mine are all f1s from land race males or you know heirloom males you know so it's like um the variation so my kiddo is running around in the spider-man costume uh, spider-man <laughs> um, you guys could also be in costume there's nothing yeah, stopping maybe you. next time no, <laughs> we'll get we'll get my, my kiddo run get the underoos on yes um sorry sorry i lost my train of thought but um um cultivars on different regions so so yeah um i mean the peruvian the peruvian punch for example um most people were just getting you know uh getting about 10 weeks you know on it um like i said california was taking like 11 weeks you know, those are the main, that's really the only place that's going, growing outside that really gives much feedback. Um, we have some people in Oklahoma, we have people around, around the country. Not everyone likes to advertise exactly what they're doing when they grab, when they grab the seeds. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. You know, we just released the Peruvian line. Um, most people are kind of getting around to it. We're almost sold out of it. So if you want any of that one, grab it. Uh, Cause we won't be making it again. Um, and then we're going to be moving on to the Mosey and Beak line and then yeah. So to answer your, answer your question, it's kind of like all across the board. In my opinion, though, if, if you're an outdoor grower, you are going to want to take a look at his seeds. I mean, the, the bigger the resilience that the land race brings into the gene pool, it's just, I mean, the natural defenses are way higher in those plants than they are in the plants that we're used to. That's part, part of the reason I've read bred with it, you know, the structure, the bigger, you know, the resistance to PM, resistance to, you know, all kinds of other stuff. So, yep, pick up the Peruvian. 
it won't be it won't be around for long. I'm sold out of like at least half. There's like twenty. There was twenty four strains at one time. Now there's like ten or twelve. There's only a few left in some of them. So, and then we're testing the Mozambique right now. Um, and then once we get some more feedback on that, we'll officially release that line. And uh, we have a couple more, you know, coming up behind it. We do some Peruvian Punch F twos, some Afghani straight from land race or not land race, but heirloom, but they were picked wild in the field. Uh, but actually some of our service members uh, made it back with a couple bags full of uh, seed directly from Afghanistan. Seeds of war. <laughs> seeds of war, sure. Just, Hopefully they were seeds of peace. seeds, not bomb though. Hopefully seeds of peace, <laughs> but yes. So yeah, right. so we're, to, we're gonna continuously work on stuff, but that's one of the things that I always do is I make stuff and I move on to the next thing. I may make F twos, some of the, uh, you know, the more popular strains. But uh, after that, it's on to the next one. So, so you like kind of just always. You, you don't want to be like the. I'm never staying still. I was gonna say like the band that always has to play like their one hit song at every con concert. Rolling Stone, <laughs> Rolling, Rolling Stone gathers no moss is, is, I guess, what they say. You just gotta right. keep moving. And either people will, will like it or whatever. But I'm really doing it for me. It's like. Exploring, exploring the genetics Be, because as, as a contrast like rick from brothers grim he's known for kind of cinderella like he's known like certain exactly. breeders are known for something specific a lot of breeders that are like that they're like will never they'll always make their stuff because it sells and i get that you know and i do i i'm widely diversified in the industry and and i and breeding is my passion and that's why i do it but it's not to make money like it is not, that's not my main source of income at this point. Um, yeah, it's becoming, it's becoming more and more, it's becoming more and more and taking up more and more of my time. But uh, it's, I do it for, I do it for me first. And then people, people just seem to like it. Let's just say we don't release everything we make for that reason. Um, I breed a lot of stuff for myself and myself only. And if I, if it, if you see it out there and you're like, well, that wasn't on a list that I got. It's simply because I felt that, you know, I wanted to share it with that person for whatever reason. But half of my stuff that I breed stays with me. So just quickly, uh, Chris Martinez says, how can he confirm it is a Peruvian land race? It's hard for me to believe that it is a land race unless you traveled personally to get them. Bodhi at least travels and shows proof. Uh, I was in Peru for two weeks, uh, hiking the Inca Trail. I uh, slept outside for five nights. Um, and I'm not saying it's land race, I'm not saying that I'm saying it came from Peru in the region of Cusco. So, uh, that's where I was when I grabbed that one. Um, Got it. I was in some other regions, but when they, when that, when I collected those seeds, um, they were in, in Cusco, Peru. The audience is asking some hard hitting, challenging questions. Oh, fun. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> oh, good. Every right to, um, so, so s sticking with kind of the, the business conversation, um, you know, basically paying the bills with breeding. So you went from charging $10 a pack and, and now kind of what, like, like the market, like, you know, you go to the Emerald cup and capulator has a line around the corner and, and each, I, forget what he charges but it's it's not yeah, 10 yeah, bucks yeah, yeah. let me just clarify we both have jobs so the yeah, breeding yeah, yeah. isn't how we pay our bills um second the ten dollar packs that that was that's for testers those are for testers as soon as everything's yeah. verified and, and good to go it's you know the 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 basic going rate nothing more you know he has wicked deals going all the time i do 50 to 60 dollar packs um okay. you want to buy one pack it's it's like 60 bucks if you want to buy two packs because they're going for 50 bucks free shipping right uh you know and i'll do all kinds so re of re reasonably priced i think I, I think so and like yeah and if somebody comes to me man usually if they ask me like hey man i'm low on my luck i'm low on funds i'm like here bro pay ten dollars for a pack or pay just pay yeah, for shipping. Like, rate. Yeah, but like, I don't, yeah, I, I value my work, don't get me wrong, but like, I'm also just like, I I was there trying to get free packs sometimes. Some people straight up ask for free packs a lot. And if you straight up ask for free packs, chances are you won't get them. But if somebody's like, hey man, I really respect your work. Like, you know, one day I'd love to be able to afford your packs. And it's like 50 or 60 bucks, but some people can't afford that. So, you know, I always, I always try to cut deals. But yeah, I'm not trying to charge $100 a pack to anybody. Right. Ever. At this point, 
I'm guilty of that. My packs, that's that's flat rate, hundred dollars. You've worked on your stuff. My a little my bit packs more. have fifteen seeds in them. Um, sometimes I like to toss more in there to surprise people, um, but uh, and then I also offer deals as well. I have full crates, um, stuff like that. Um, I think I, I mean I don't know anybody else who offers a dollar a seed at a certain point, but I do. Right. Who, who are, uh, I mean, in the same, so, I mean, Jonathan, it was Eric Brandstadt who mentioned you. And then I was like, we're talking about you right now. And he jumped on and then you mentioned Brett. So who, who are kind of some other breeders that have come across your radar, either in Colorado or elsewhere that kind of you think people should know about and, and, uh, check out. Did you say breeders? Yes. Um, let's see i mean first one that comes to my mind is uh a good buddy of mine uh his name's ryan um valhalla genetics um what what, what is that ba valhalla oh valhalla yeah, yeah. great yeah. guy um i know he could use the support uh his mom just had a major major uh surgery um so their their family's kind of uh going through some things right now um but uh he he does have some stuff and i think he would be blown away uh people reached out to him he is also an amazing painter i don't yeah. know i don't know came, where his came talent nowhere. came from like but, all paint uh, stuff man. he's he's got some mad skills with the oil paints yeah i, I uh I usually don't like to do this, but some of these seed guys, you know, that I, that I get my seeds from, uh, Congo Seed Projects, where I got the last round of uh, seeds from, from the Congo. I thought they were pretty special. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of followers, you know. Um, I'm sure he wants some really cool heirloom, land race, whatever you want to call them, seeds direct from the Congo. Uh, Congo Seed Project. Um, yeah, and like they took like a month to get here. It took forever, um, but he was like so worried about it the whole time. Wanted to make sure I was happy. He was like, I was wasn't sure if he sent him at first, you know. Um, and then they eventually got here, and he was like, okay, sweet, you know. He, was like, he felt so much better. So um, that guy was cool. And then that, that was the other one um, I was telling you about, Guardian of the Lost Turps. Yes. Um, let me look up his actual Instagram handle. I think it is. That's These it. people deserve the shout outs Gar because yeah, they're Guardian of work. of the Lost Turps. Yeah, I think. They're, they're out there finding those things that we can like, we can play with, yeah. you know? Um, these guys, this guy's from Siberia, he's got Siberian land race. So like directly from Siberian wild seeds. So there's just some interesting, interesting stuff. Um, you know, you can shout out all kinds of different breeders, um, you know, but directly, I don't mess with a lot of people. I don't know about you, but like I get my seeds, try to get them directly from the source in the region, get my cuts directly from a person I know, mm -hmm. And then I move forward. The only seeds I usually get are breeders, um, which I really support with, you know, Covert's one of them. Um, you know, a, a few guys that I think are doing really cool stuff. Uh, Greenpoint Seeds, you know, I don't, I don't grow for them anymore, but they produce some awesome quality seeds at a great price, greenpointseeds.com. Um, you know, great customer service. Uh, you know, you can't complain if you're looking for, looking for seeds, feminized, regular, whatever, they got great seeds. Um, who else? Uh, I really, really respect Compound Genetics, what they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I just think they put out some some, some fire. Um, Rick, of course. I mean, Rick Kepinola, He's he's been working hard the last last couple of years to really stabilize that Cindy ninety nine, and really not just stabilize it, but improve on it. He did a picture. And it was like you know, old school Cindy ninety nine, new school Cindy ninety nine. It's like same flavor profile, just more more vigor, more, more everything. Feminized. And, and then feminized. And feminized. So um, I think those guys uh, are doing some great work. We can, we can shout out breeders all day, uh, but you know, you just want the people. I don't like to recommend too many people because I don't work directly with them. You know, um, that's one of the things these days is like getting your hands dirty with people, having the hard conversations, exactly what they're doing, exactly what cut they use to make that cross how many the selections they went through and for them to be open and honest with you and not be shady um because that weeds out the people Absolutely. and that's why i say less i can't i can't really come up with a lot of names because you don't want to i don't want to say anything bad about anybody only good things 
So that's where I'm at. <laughs> right. Keep the circle small. Are, are either of you exploring a uh, kind of auto flower or not really? You know, this, uh, the Siberian um, land race is a soup, it's called super auto flower. Most auto flowers, you know, they flower when they first pop up on the soil and they uh, grow pretty small. These are supposed to grow just the same size as normal cannabis plants, but they're going to be auto flowers. So I'm going to do a project with those later on down the line. Um, this should produce some really interesting auto flower traits. I just like to talk shit about auto flowers. Yeah, so. yeah, they, they're wild. <laughs> they're crazy. That's the fun part. You don't want to put them in your lines. No, well, it's, you got to know what you're buying. Yeah. All right. My thing is, I see a lot of auto flowers that run the same damn time as my regulars. Like, I, I veg for 30 days, maybe a little longer, depending on the growth rates. And then I flip. So you're looking at, you know, <laughs> Saving a week, saving a week or two. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's just. I haven't had much experience with auto flowers, to be honest. I'm always going. And then the size, photo period. Now, like I know, I mean, so James Loud was going to be on with us, and he he ran into some technical challenges with his phone, but uh, I know he he came out with some auto, and uh, like a lot of people are are uh, you know adding autos to their lineup. I oh think my gosh. I think if you kids. can do it, if you can do Why it well, not? Yeah, no, for it sure. Well. All more power to you. Um, I think it's it's great to be able to cater to more customers if if that's you know if if that's your business it is seeds and and only seeds. I've got so much going on. Photos is <laughs> is what I'm about. Um, I'm dipping my toes into the fem pond as far as feminizing seeds. Um, and even that's like, I feel like that's going to take up even more of my time um, than I already have <laughs> to give at this point. So um, autos for me is, is just not in the picture. That's a lot of, it's a lot of work to do it right. And I, I think, you know, for when it. people, you know, are, you know, want to release something that's perfect, you know, uh, it's look, quote unquote perfect or close to perfect. You can get that easier through traditional breeding, but like I feel autos, you know, they introduce some question marks and you gotta maybe run a few, run a few lines, you know, and not release a lot of stuff and spend a lot of time making seeds that you don't feel are fit for the market. So um, rather than go backwards, trying to recreate the wheel, do what you do best, I think is what, what this guy has been doing. So, but feminized, you know, people call for it. So you gotta do that too. Right. So, we tried to. <laughs> And, and and on the business side, are are you only selling kind of because you're both small, so are you only selling directly to people? Or are you working through a bunch of seed banks or kind of what's all right. the? All all direct. We've done some like small releases to some very small people that do auctions and stuff like that. Um, but you know, it's usually you know, if just if us selling the seeds directly if to you're you. buying a pack, it. It most likely from us or came directly from us. Um, there's we, no middlemen. Um, emails are responded to directly by us. Um, we care about our, our our customers. You know, I mean, we put a lot of love and time into this, and it it means more to me to send somebody a replacement replacement pack, no questions asked, than to sit there and BS with them like, oh well, why didn't this happen or why didn't this happen or you know, you should have done this. Who am I to say? I just send them another pack, make sure they're happy, and they're going to pass that on. Versus, man, this guy hassled me when I genuinely had a problem. Yeah, you always just want to, you know, I think it's, you know, get, first getting the customer to, to you know, purchase something and have them have a good experience, you know, whether that's if they have a good experience with the seeds or not, you want them to have a good experience with you personally, mm -hmm. you know, and you got to handle things properly and and not ignore problems and not deflect and you know own up to things and you know if you sometimes you send the wrong Ethics. sometimes you send the wrong pack or sometimes oh crap you know I forgot to send that out or or whatever and you you know I think both of us always try to make up for those things and keep keep customers earn you got to earn customers these days because there's a lot of Absolutely. a lot of breeders out there and some of them have amazing genetics and and great customer service and some of them don't have both you know? we don't go soliciting people so. so anything purchased from us people were interested in it because they seen the work that we put in and or word of mouth right 
Um, sorry, I'm trying to keep up with the uh, <laughs> the YouTube chat. Uh, and then Gemma has, oh my gosh, I have another daughter Hi, coming baby. in. Hi, what's up? Man, I miss my kids. Here, hold on one second. Here, uh, oh my God, we have kids everywhere. Yeah, he was banging down the door. He had to come say hi. You say hi? Hi. Hi. Nice. Say, say I'm Spider Man. I'm Spider Man. Say, ch -ch -ch. <laughs> say, say, peace, bro. Peace, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right, well, yeah. I just want to get, right. him, get him some. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go see Mama. He's going to steal the show. Yeah, he is. Sorry. I said bye-bye. Um, right. He's like, what is dad doing down there? He's having more fun than me. Yeah, no, I'm just, uh, sorry. Now I'm getting wait, back wait. into the... We can tell you're reading. <laughs> <laughs> so I think some people... Uh, don't like Greenpoint's reputation. Mm, there, people are gonna like and dislike a lot of things. Everyone has a different experience, ideas. you know. Um, you know, there's different people that have worked there. You know, I, you know, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what experiences they had, but um, that's it, it is what it is. What it is. I'm not sure if they had bad experience with seeds or the any experience I've ever had with them uh it was been on a positive note so i, yeah. I can only speak for myself yeah. i think they go above and beyond to ha handle most cu uh, customer issues that you know are reasonable i think some people um they are very you know this, this day and age very demanding and you know things happen and um so i can't i can't speak to that too much but sorry i don't, I don't. right it, 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 they made copper chem and I, that's I sourced it from them. As part as, as part of my part of my Fucking phenomenal. Part of my, that's all I got part to of my say. journey. They've been they've been great to me. I learned learned a lot about breeding. I learned about a lot about business. And yeah, hey, yeah, I can't control what other what other people do or other people's perception. I can only control right. what, I, what I do. <laughs> I promise you, you'll enjoy Kimberley more than than you enjoyed your experience with. Then, if that's the case, <laughs> well, we, we, we just try to operate out of that mentality. Like, hey, we know what it you know what it feels like to be the other end, on the other end of a maybe not so good seed deal. You know, some yeah. people feel <laughs> like they got shafted, and I'm sorry if that happened to you. You know, but um, I try when my, in my company, I know this guy tries to do like, everything they can to make sure every customer is happy. Mm -hmm. You know, even if they're not happy with the seeds, giving them a refund, giving them more seeds. You know, uh, giving them time and like giving them a little bit of give a little bit of your time and answering questions and um, trying to figure out how to make. Some people are just, I hate to say, some people are just unhappy and they don't like the seed, so they take it out on you. And it's easy, uh, easy target sometimes for you to say, you know, these seeds didn't germinate or whatever. And I get it. And you know, maybe you send another pack and you give them a little coaching on, hey, maybe they try it this way or whatever. Um, and you and you try to keep the level head. And that's that's all we can do is, as as uh, customer service people or business owners or whatever is uh, try to take each customer you know, one at a time personally. And if that didn't happen at another company, I'm sorry, but yeah, we here, we can only here we are. Yeah, here we're we are. Here, responsible for us. Here we are. You know. Right. Well, how how about just to to yourselves personally in in terms of um, you know, keeping customer like like someone gets in touch with you and says, you know, whatever their gripe is, stuff didn't pop, it hermied, it did whatever, kind of what, what's the, what's the response? Like, what's the keeping customer happy strategy in turn? Like, like, give, give me some examples of the stra the strategy, someone calls you with a complaint and, uh, and the yeah, kind of I think, reaction. I think taking everyone individually, I think is important in saying, okay, so it hermied, um, what, 
you know, maybe, maybe say, first of all, say, Hey man, really sorry that happened. That's super bummer. I am embarrassed or, you know, I, I feel bad. Uh, what can we do to, to fix this? You know, uh, can I send you another pack or something different? Um, can I get, you know, maybe before you dive in and say, Hey, what did you do wrong? You know, but, but eventually get there and say, Hey, what can we do to maybe change your process a little bit? You know, if the street seeds didn't germinate, maybe give them another, another method, you know, rather than the paper towel method, give them the shot glass water method or something like that. Or, Hey, you have a light leak. Is it possible your timer's broken, you know, and you're getting some bad light and that's why it hermed or you're feeding super heavy salts or something like that. Um, but at the end of the day, you want to say, Hey, you want a refund, you want your seeds, and then you send them out. And you do exactly what you say you're going to do, and you try to, you know, try to mend the situation. Some situations can't be amended, um, but you do everything in your power and, and to do that, and, and you don't get upset, you don't deflect. And I think boiled down, you give them the benefit of the doubt. You say, hey, if something fucked up somewhere, what can I, what can we do to resolve this? If we can resolve this. <laughs> Um, and, and from there, it's, it's kind of up to them whether they want the refund or uh, a secondary pack of something else, or maybe they just wanted to call or message you and say, hey, this happened. Sometimes yeah, and so, people and some don't people, want anything. And some people don't want anything. You're right. And like, those are some people that I just send things, things to anyways, or it's like, you know, thank God they had a huge order or something like that. But, but like, there's people out there that will order one pack and think and, and make you feel like you just like you know tried to pollinate their whole crop or something yeah, like that and not know. every hypothetically in the situation of you know say something perm you know there's no freaking way first off everything's gonna perm so with that being said we're sorry for that in particular perm and incident it, and it is a nature a, a natural thing you know we do right. what we can as breeders you know uh, but even the best guys have, have perms but you know, it's, it's all in how you handle it. It's not, it's right. not getting angry, not getting upset and saying, it's not my fault, which I know some breeders have done in the past. And um, I think it's all about, so sorry, what can we do to fix it? And, and not like bowing down to the customer, but um, to a point, you know, uh, trying to make them as happy as they can. Like I said, some customers, they just want to be angry, um, but you do what you can. <laughs> I, that's, with that yeah. being said, that's exactly why I have the, the, um, one replacement pack for any of the strains that you get, you know, say you get 10 packs, you got an issue with every freaking pack for whatever reason. I'm not going to ask. It's not my place to question anymore. Like I used to, but then I started realizing, you know, these people may turn around to the next person who turns around to the next person who says, Hey, all this guy does is hassle you when you have a genuine problem versus, you know what he did? He just replaced the shit right off the bat. Didn't ask questions. Used the same address. Hell, I didn't even know he sent the shit. He right. just sent it because I told him I had a problem with it. It's 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 more important to me or us in general to to keep the customer happy than to uh, play twenty one questions in the at the end of the day. Agreed. Yeah. And I'm doing a little customer service on the chat right now. So hold on. <laughs> <laughs> um. What, uh, what are you kind of, ex I mean, you, you said you're releasing some stuff soon. So kind of what are you, what are you like when, when you guys talk to each other, like, let's say you were hypothetically sitting together and smoking a joint, like right now, like what, what are you guys dorking out on right now together? Um, like what, what, what was the last like passionate in-depth discussion you had and what was the topic? Well, uh, Brett is sort of the keeper of my my veg garden when it gets too full. Um, I I want like all the good cuts, so he gives me all the good cuts, <laughs> and then I eventually give him cuts back. Yes, so that's the deal. Is like so. We recently did a transaction where he gave me a good amount of delicious flavors, and I put them in my notes of living soil, and now they have a new home there. He's free to use them in any. You know, breeding yeah, so then I select, I select from there and the stuff I already have and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the most recent. Well, I mean, every every line that he's made, I, I'm happy to say that I've been able to help out in some sort of way. Like he was, was looking for something. Had a few. Yeah, right. Had a few in there, yeah. 
I'm going to be able to say, hey, I can get that one for you. Yeah, or, yeah. you know, I, I know somebody who can get that for you. It's, it's, it's fun. And when you say, you know, breed, you know, breeder, connected breeders, it's breeders and growers in Colorado mm -hmm. and just trusted people, you know, because some, you know. Right. And that, that's, you know, that's the, the circle of, of trust is where we get our, get our cuts. And that's where, that's where the, the conversation usually lies is, so can you get this cut or what's up with that cut? Or, or oh, hey, this, I've oh, got can I get this way cut? too or, many cuts. Or can I get this cut back? And I'm like, <laughs> yes, please. You've given me way too many cuts. I need to get them out of here. <laughs> So just quickly, uh, and, and you guys touched on this a little bit earlier, but Chris Martinez asks, what are they breeding for? For example, some breed for hash, some breed for production. What lane are they focusing on uh, in your breeding? What What would you say your, I mean, you said you, you're all gas, no breaks. <laughs> if I'm to speak for me, uh, I would say just, I mean, o overall, um, you know, it's good quality flower, you know, uh, pretty, tasty smooth interesting you know uh interesting cannabinoids uh but the flower itself i would hope would be the focus um you know and then uh, and then you know obviously great hash but number one bring for interesting um interesting flower and interesting terpenes and effects for me right now since i mean i hate to say it but the market's got a pretty good um, lock on structure for flower formation and everything like that. I mean, I, <laughs> it, everything's looking phenomenal like as far as I'm <laughs> this is straight, straight, right. straight nugs. So I'm, I'm personally focusing on terpenes and oil production as far as essential oils because let's just not a lot of people are doing the the rosin or or water hash. There's still a vast majority doing the hydrocarbons and things like that so you they're really after the essential oils and terpenes um, that get pulled with the gases so that's that's my focus outside of stability um, and structure what uh are, are you both kind of mostly in terms of your own smoking preferences are you mostly flour or do you also like a good hash or a good uh I can't do flour i go day. back and forth it depends i hate to say it but if like if i grew it like i'll smoke it but like if i don't know the grower it's tough for me to like really enjoy it when like, i just buy it from like a dispensary even if it looks amazing it tastes amazing smells amazing i've worked in enough grows i know what happens you know, and I don't know what happened. I, just, I, you know, I just can't smell flour so, in a day. It's fucking nap time. So I, I prefer uh, if I can get some good. So, so, so what are you, are, are you smoking hash or are you smoke uh, like right hash? Now, so right now I'm smoking hash. Because okay. I, I don't have any stuff that, hash all that I was really, gr that I grew. And is it, is it pressed or is it a uh, old school temple? Uh, right now I'm smoking rosin from so, yeah, okay. Laser Cat. We both have the same, like I got, I got some fat. Some fat zone, I think you see that. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh. fat, fat, fat so rosin, rosin uh, lava is what they call this one. But uh, yeah, when I do smoke concentrates, I do try to do the rosin if possible. I, I, and I, cause I know like um, the, what was it? The 710 cup or whatever back in, uh, God, that was like 20, 2013 or, or a lot. It, it was my introduction into kind of the whole uh, concentrate scene in call in Denver. Um, and that was actually part of it was at uh, what was it? Grassroots, California. And part of it was at Adam Dunn's uh, uh, whatever his clothing brand was called or is called. Oh. Um, but, but like, are, do, do you guys do kind of uh, like live, do you like live resin? Or are you mostly oh, yeah. uh, yes, solving well, this? I love diamonds. Yeah. Okay definitely yeah for sure in fact that's my preferred um the diamonds that in the thc the turps I, yeah, I think ap applesauce consistency is my favorite you know something with a bunch of crust up crystals I don't, i'm not really a big giant boulder guy i don't really get it but you got to mix it up <laughs> because you get burnout on the same the same um i don't know consistency i guess um just like smoking the same flour all the time you kind of get burnout on it you get burnt out on diamonds. That's why I switch up to rosin a little bit. Um, and then I'll switch it back. 
So, so who you, you had mentioned some, but can you talk about some of the either hash or uh, hydrocarbon brands that you respect? Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and what's the scene like in Colorado? I mean, are, are I, it, it, I feel like it's a big dab market. Like that, yeah, it is. It is. It's just so much more convenient and available these days. And like, there's a lot of a lot of quality product and the price is going down and down. Um, it's tough to say no, to say no when it's all when it's it's all there, you know, in the candy store. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of people dab. A lot of people don't smoke flour at all. Um, some people are like, you know, a lot of people are dab only. I, you know, I'm shunned from a lot of groups for smoking my flour. I got kids. I don't have time to sit down to a joint, a bowl, that, things like that. Yeah. A dab gets me where I need to be. I can go on <laughs> about my day. If a bowl, if a bowl is the right flour, it can get you where you want to be, but not much. Not much can do that these days. Well, that's the downside of dabbing too. If you constantly dab, your tolerance is up, and you got to smoke more of the flour to get where you need breaks, to be. So breaks, breaks are necessary. Breaks are necessary. Absolutely. Right. But what, what would be kind of your general evaluation of the Colorado scene and the market and, you know, like, whether it's I mean, vape pens, like j- j- just everything, like, like, for example, is, is there way too much flour production? Is it yes. good oh, quality God. flour? Is it bad? Is it, uh, they, are there craft they, cultivators? Is it all a couple kind of flour, mega grows? Kind of flour production and it's all bids, 99% of it. Okay. I mean, unless they're growing our stuff. Well, it, 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 I mean, some of it's grown with great care, and don't get me wrong, you know, it, some of it's amazing, but a lot of it out there is just older herb, a lot of it, you know, that's actually sitting on the shelves. It's not like, you know. So I, I work for a company here in Colorado called Leafa. Or dry, <laughs> dry herb. Called Leafa, L E I F F A. You can find them on Instagram as well. Um, their hash company, a rosin uh, company, they also uh, uh, have uh, medical flour on their shelves as well. But uh, they're very focused on um, quality, obviously, because the only way that they put concentrates out is through um, uh, water hash and pressing. So, I mean, you got to be very stickler on what you're, you're processing. Otherwise, I mean, <laughs> your, your clientele is going to be like, what the hell is this? I mean, there's no, there's there's great stuff out there. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm no, like, he, for sure. But yeah. there's so many people out here that are just rushing it. I well, mean, it's like when I think that you can clean up uh, a lot of mistakes in concentrate, and I think that's why the concentrate game is so huge too. And people love pens, the distillate, and the pens is just like um, I think that's probably one of the one of the bigger markets. You know that oh, absolutely. You know, obviously, dabs. You know, for the connoisseurs, is huge. You know, a lot of dab connoisseurs in Denver. But I think just, you know, everyone's smoking on a pen, whether they're, you know, a tourist or a local. I think everyone's going in and grabbing those little distillate pens or even the, um, the green dot pens and stuff like that. are like, those are nice. Oh, they're, you know, in my opinion, they're, they're, they're the they're, best pens on the market. They take, <laughs> yeah, some of those pens, like some of those pens are getting, you know, live rosin in them, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're fire, so. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that start, I mean, yeah, here in California, you're starting to see like pens with stuff that you've never seen in them before. Um, and, and then like, it, I mean, I, I don't, <laughs> I have never bought anything in a dispensary, but I know kind of like the dominant brand is raw garden, uh, here in California for live resin. Uh, and, and I think mostly it's like, they have a consistently good quality for value. So it's like, reasonably you know and like with taxes everything you know it's like add 50 percent to what you pay at the at the cash register so like hard to find is good quality for value i mean it's either quality what the hell price can is is that i don't i don't have that in my my budget or man i'm not smoking that i'd rather save my money so I, mean, I, will, I will say it depends on the area and, and the store you buy the products in. Yes. Yeah, we were finding that we bought the same product and he paid like $10, 15 more than I did. <laughs> for the same exact product, just because yeah, it's a different area. Just because it's a different area. Can you help me find Demographics, Barbie? is that what it's called? You, you need help Barbie. finding Barbie. All right, let's. Oh, yeah, we, we quickly, have you been watching Barbie? Yes. 
like this Barbie? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, there you go. <laughs> <That Barbie's> the <laughs> this is how I. This is how I. I free myself up to do these. I just stick the yeah. the Netflix in front of her. Uh, yeah. No. So, so Chris Martinez, are you in California? Yeah. I mean, I. I mean, Raw Garden. I, I'm just saying they are the. Uh, they sell more live resin than anyone else. Um, but uh, sorry, people are chatting about uh, different brands. Um, yeah, no, because I know, like, like for example, the, the live resin scene, like that was what Kind Bill and uh, yeah, and um, pretty sure he pioneered that. Yeah, and, and then the guy who's now in uh, Price, Oklahoma. And then like, like, you know, the hash stuff, I mean, Nick T was based out of Colorado for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he was great on the, on the, uh, the water hash and the, yeah. and the dry sift. But there's not dry sift. It was, uh, no, you're right. Yeah. No, he did a lot of different stuff. A lot of solventless, a lot of solventless stuff. And so are you guys, uh, I mean, I'm looking in the background. You just have, I don't see a torch anywhere. So, so are you, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, so you're not like, are you pulling out the peak every once in a while? Like, what's your go-to? So you're just all torch. Yes, sir. All right. The peak. For one, I don't have that. I, I don't have money for a peak. <laughs> right. I mean, I. I don't dab. I don't dab that often. So I, mean, I really don't. I get. I get. And I, I get dabbing once in a while. I dab but. too much to be freaking charging a damn rig all the time so <laughs> right. it's just you charge your phone you know charging things right, going right, back right shit you're dead can't take it out <laughs> no. right so what what uh are are you i mean you're both on instagram like what um what kind of breeder shit talking squabbling have I mean, I stay you guys out seen all and that. i say that all that man I try let to stay. Let out. Let, let's do our TMZ segment. Who, who's talking shit about who? And I'm not one to call anybody out because I, it's, I mean, who doesn't not like being called out? So, um, but it's like any press, like, good press, I guess. But it's like Instagram is the new soapbox, and and everybody's got their nose in everybody else's business. It seems like. And how the hell are you putting in so much work if you're worried about the next guy so fucking much? I mean, I've got so much going on on my plate. Like, I, I barely have time to call Brett, but maybe once a week, once every other week to, if we, if to we, catch up. If we and, get together. Right. I mean, that, yeah. getting over here tonight was like, hey, 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 get it somebody, was phone tag. Can somebody please watch the kids for a little while? <laughs> it was yeah. fucking phone tag. Yeah, you get it. You get it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, no. yeah, we, I, I try to stay out of all that, to be honest. I mean, in terms of other people's stuff, like I said, I, I try to just follow people there about about positivity, you know, to be to be quite frank, you know, and, and I understand like the times that we're in, there's going to be a lot of a lot of conflict and a lot of opinions. And we just try to, you know, just rise above and do what we do and do what we've been doing and be the people that we are and try to stay out of the drama, to be honest, because there's a the scene game has been a lot of drama and it, and it can it, it still can be. And I, um, I think that's all my choice for a lot of people, you know. The drama is exciting, you know, it's like all these peeps, you know. I'll, I'll be honest, my platform is not nearly big enough for me to get my nose in anybody else's drama. Um, it, it can honestly affect me. I mean, there's some people out there where it does not affect them on what they say, who they piss off, you know, the 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 fall off in customers. It's like they don't, it doesn't, they don't see a dent anywhere. It doesn't affect them personally. Yeah, we try, um, we try to do, keep it business keep it you know family sometimes and uh and you know and that's about it for Absolutely. me yeah so but i feel you it's a fun game out there you know there's a lot of a lot of beefs a lot of opinions i think that's uh that's what makes it fun but we i do a lot of hiding in my basement you know working with the plants <laughs> just like zenning putting my hands in the soil i will holding, holding giant crystals and like i'll be honest again i do love a good call out post mm -hmm. as far as you know so who doesn't love a good roast every once in a while as long as it's legit but that vague shit like don't put up a post beating around the bush because i'll call <laughs> your ass out on that 
<laughs> I brought popcorn. I came to see a show just like everybody else. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I w so kind of like one of the things that popped on my radar today was uh, Karma Genetics uh, posted something, you know, big warning, this is a fake website, full scan, basically someone pretending to be Karma Genetics and selling seeds and. Uh, uh, I just seen one today about somebody selling booth packs of uh, archive. Oh, that's who you posted about. I saw you posted something. Yeah, like I cross posted. I it's. I mean, they called them out that's on it, so it's it's definitely legit. So selling, yeah, selling other people's warning, packs. Is, warning other people is different than uh, fucking starting drama. Yeah. So here, here is the post I was talking about. If you guys, I, can I see recall that. seeing that. Yeah. So anyway, that that's kind of the it's kind of like just what's what's been not what shit have you guys been talking, but more yeah, kind of what yeah. what have you seen that made you laugh uh, or like uh, James James Bean of um, uh, seeds seeds here now yeah uh, he's the one who uh, filled me in not personally but uh, through social media about the the fake packs being sold by uh, artisan seeds um, of archives uh, Casper OG and something else. They literally look like a uh, permanent marker written on the fucking packs. Um, and uh, Fletcher uh, verified that they were not his stock. So that's that's the most recent, like, legitimate um, uh, call out I've seen. Right. So just quickly, because I, uh, I have my dinner imminently arriving <laughs> um what is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we uh wrap it up yes if you guys are cocoa growers look up uh gorilla boost cocoa coir um phenomenal product um i know the farm that it comes from in india uh 300 miles inland so the salinity level right off the bat is extremely lower than what anybody else is working with, to my knowledge at least. Um, so you definitely want to check them out. Gorilla Boost, Cocoa Coir. Um, they can be found on Instagram. Um, yeah, so, so J Justin Gardner, I'm back on the top, the, the TMZ side of the conversation. <laughs> Justin Gardner said, not down with the drama, but we need people to support good people and call out the bad ones. The industry is full of snakes and it's way past time to cut the grass. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I, hear, Absolutely. I hear that. And, right. and, and, I, and I think, you know, for me, it, it's like there are so many people who are kind of so deep in this where like, like someone like someone will throw a meme out there and I'm like, that just went over my head. I have no idea what they're talking right. about. Yeah. And it's kind of like, but other people totally get it. And it's like, yeah, I mean, what what I try. So for me, you know, the reason I'm having you guys on is because I like, I want to help support and shine a light on small people, like putting their head down, working hard, trying to do quality work, and um, you know, it, it's all. And, and then I'll, someone always has an issue with someone, like some. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are for some kidding? reason, everyone hates someone, and yeah, we're, we're going to be doing a big we're going to be doing a big sale on our CBD website, heartandsoilproject.com, here soon. Uh, and me and my my web developer were just talking about it. It's like people are always pissed off about. So we're like talking about how should we how should we go about this sale? Um, you know, this is our summer sale. We always we always have this sale, and uh, you know, and we're just trying to be respectful of everybody. And but at the same time, it's like you got to be true to yourself. You got to just like go forward. You know, uh, you can't, you can't please everybody. You know, you obviously try to, you know, do what you think is right at all times. And uh, like I said, move forward. But like, like to your point, you always piss somebody off. Mm -hmm. You always, and if you don't have, you know, I don't want people to hate me, but if you don't have any haters, you're not doing anything right. You know, if you don't have somebody that's a, you know, man. Okay. Like I, j j just quickly, uh, I want you guys to talk to each other for two minutes while I quickly run and grab the food at the door. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, you can't. She was saying you can. 
So yeah, Elizabeth says, uh, you can trick the land race to go grow somewhat like an auto flower. Just skip the veg, run seeds on 24 seven flower lighting for 25 days, then run on 12, 12 for another 25 days. Most of them turn. Interesting. You ever heard of that? No, I haven't. Yeah, it'll be fun to, fun to check out. All right, was well, it riveting? Light riveting, we, just, we were just reading Elizabeth's uh, uh, insight on uh, tricking a land race to grow somewhat like an autoflower by messing with the the veg and the flower cycle. So, and, always, and what and what are your the, thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I tried to post some of the comments to you guys. Yeah, so. it's hard to see from back here. So you know, we're, I wasn't even aware. I, <laughs> I, when you said pull up the chat, I pulled it up. And I was like, oh, all right. So yeah, um, you know, I've never tried it. You know, I know there's a lot of people that you know reduce the amount of light in the flower cycle to save on money. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever heard of that going like, instead of 12, 12, you know, do it a couple more hours of darkness, you know? Um, doing like a, a five, one, five, one, like- No, you, just, to, you ha continue having the 12 hours of off, but only have, instead of having 12 hours on, have 11 or 10. Oh, so for me, I personally run uh, 14, 10. Right. It's, it's cheaper right. for me. It's hot here. It's hot as hell. Here. Yeah. So there's a lot of ways to manipulate the cycle to make the plane either flip into flower faster. You know, and I'm speaking for my regular photo period cannabis, not land race or heirloom. Um, for flower, I'll run 10 hours on, 14 hours off. Um, if, if it's super cool, uh, as far as like season wise, I'll do 12 12 just to give them, you know, more light, more lumens however you want to look at it it's just easier for me to run the lights longer when it's cooler so that's why I yeah so, so talk talk to me about kind of like for the home growers um i get a pack of seeds and you know obviously as quickly as possible i want to know who's a male who's a female so what are kind of some tips and tricks for figuring that out sooner rather than later Find, finding males and females yeah my trick um I, I get them into solo cups as quick as I can as far as seedlings. If you want to germinate them in, in solo cups, um, that's up to you. But uh, once once I have a, a plant in a solo cup, I keep it in the solo cup. Yeah. So, so th this is, uh, I popped a bunch of seeds from Pacific Northwest Roots. So... Um, once I have a plant in a solo cup, I leave it in there as long as I can. If a plant gets slightly root bound, it tricks itself into thinking, hey, possibly not going anywhere. You know, my, my root zone hasn't expanded. I need to start showing sex. So it's going to force them to show sex a little quicker without even having to do anything with the lights. Root by root bounding. Yes, yes. Not extremely not like to where they're, it's physically affecting them. You see clawing up, you know, uh, nutrient issues, um, but uh, just long enough to where it forces them to start showing sex. Are you under the 18.6 or yeah. just under 12? Yeah, no, 18.6. Okay, so you keep them on normal light cycle, but by them feeling like they're bound up, they're almost like, I got to do my thing now. Yeah, I got to start, I got to start, um, maturing so to speak um, right. because if they have enough room to do their their expansion underneath they're gonna they're gonna focus on that to try and occupy their root zone obviously there's a lot of food space down there so um there it's it's just gonna slow down that um, maturing process at least in my opinion excuse me in my opinion and experience i'm not saying that everybody has the same results as me but for me, I get my plants to show sex quicker in a solo cup under 18.6 um, just by holding them in that solo cup longer. So I also use a solo cup or a small pot. But what I do is I take a clone. Um, you know, you can always just, well, I mean, 18.6 works sometimes, but not always. Um, you know, for me, it's all, I always want to be sure. You know, when I'm, when I'm messing with either a breeding ground or a flowering ground, um, you know, for, 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 you know, for bud, I want to make sure that I know where my males are, you know, so if I brand new seeds, I always grow the plants up, take a clone or two off each one, root it out, take one clone, put it in the solo cup or something small, 
flower it out for 10 days, do it all with all at the same time, number them properly. Um, and that's how you find your males and your females. Um, and that's a, you can do a small little female hunt that way and find your, you know, top pick, you know, which one flowers first or things like that. Okay. Um, so, so, so yeah. off, off the main plants, you're taking clippings from each one, marking them yeah, and then forcing plant, those to flower essentially. To flower, and, you, and then you find out exactly what that plant is. There's no, no guessing in that way. You don't, you know, you have a male and it's, you, you, you don't stress out the, the you know, mom. Main, yeah, plant. exactly. I don't like to put a plant in and take it back out personally. Um, if I'm going to pop a seed, you know, the reason I'm popping it is because I want fresh genetics. I want that hybrid vigor. I want healthy plants. So, um, and that mom is like the original, you know, before the first generation clone. So as you, gen as you clone off a plant, eventually it's going to have a little bit of genetic drift. So why not use that one plant if you're going to either breed with it or even grow with it? Um, you want to make sure to, first of all, preserve that strain. So a lot of people put that strain in the flower room. Some of them male, some of them are female, some of them are great, some of them suck. They smoke it, that's the best weed I've ever had. Did you take a clone? No, it's done forever. So if you're going to spend all the money on seed, in my opinion, you might as well take it, clone it, find out if it's male or female, pick your, your favorite one or however many you can you know, fit in your space and, that you like, and, and that way you, you have a... Uh, you know exactly what you got, you know, and, and, you, and you have it for future growth. So you can continue to cut off the, that mom and have that mom forever, you know, if you so choose. But um, that's my, that's my opinion on, on sexing. It's like, you can go under 18.6, but there's no way to tell for sure until you go 12.12. Um, well, that's not necessarily true, but that's how I do it. Uh -huh. it's just for the, That's just how, to be, to be certain, you know, I, I always like to do a good job of cataloging, good job of labeling, and then picking my phenos is like, it's my bread and butter and his bread and butter. Because if you usually pick, you know, between 10, 50, 100 seeds, you want to make sure that you're labeling things properly and picking the best male and the best female, just not just hoping that you get the best one when you put them in. So that's how I like to do it to make sure that you save those seed genetics and you don't just grow them out one time and then talk about them for the rest of your life. Never smoke, <laughs> never smoke them again. Right. So. so someone mentioned uh pistol positive colorado breeder levi. first time tuning in, i grew some pistol positive strains by colorado breeder levi my favorite was gorilla grod that had gg4 and one he named pie face that had the key lion pie gsc fino um someone else said pistol positive has some interesting gear Y'all have to check them out. Pistol positive. And then, uh, all right. Well, I think on, on that note, my my food has arrived. I, was so gonna say, I think it's about time for all of us to do it. I got to call it a night. <laughs> and we have about, about a, 180 people still tuned in. So I appreciate it, everyone. Um, and, and then, and then, so just so everyone knows, so we had like James Loud, um, Short, um, uh, Eric from HBK, uh, we had some technical, basically no phone reception Next time. Next time. issues, but, uh, cause I wanted to do a day of breeding and just have like different people, like, like WrestleMania style tagging in, tagging out, uh, man, jumping in on conversations. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like two of us here, but. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you need to borrow the costumes from your son so you guys can be. Uh, yeah, yeah, Spider Man will get you. Yeah, right. So, but but I appreciate the time. And uh, so, so basically, if people want to buy your stuff, uh, can they just go through your Instagram, your respective that's Instagram? Right. Go the Instagram. The website's on the Instagram. Yeah. Artsoilproject.com. We don't all, we don't offer our, um, our heirloom uh varieties on the website because the website is a strictly cbd hemp website um so if you're interested in hemp or cbd products uh heart and soil cbd.com heart and soil uh, project.com uh, we do uh, hemp regular hemp seeds and feminized hemp seeds as well so you can contact uh, me through the instagram for all of that uh, if you have any questions um happy to answer everything so thanks for the thanks Absolutely. for the time and the support and, you know, if you ever, ever want to have us on again, you're down.
you can uh, contact me at uh, Covert Genetics uh, on uh, Instagram and then my email. There's a link for my email on uh, my Instagram or Covert Genetics at gmail.com. Um, and your last name is Covert. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Yes, it is. That's the that's the key. That's the that's, that's the, the thing. kicker. Is it or is it not? <laughs> I don't even know if I it's, know the real answer secret. to that question. Now. Ah, you've never seen his license. Yeah, that's not, that's not the fun of it though. That's not the fun. So, all right, well, you go eat your dinner. All right, yeah. thank you, everyone. Take it easy. Take care. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna kill the uh, 